Hello, hello, welcome back to Boys on Film. I'm Phil. I'm Raj. And we're covering South by Southwest, one of the many festivals that we've covered. We've done BFI Flair, London Film Festival, and yeah, all the premieres, all the red carpets, we cover it. So get on our social medias, check out all the content, and don't forget, big letters, capital letters, subscribe. <laughs> you know what to do. So, an amazing festival this year. I mean, I enjoyed so many of the films and the documentaries that were shown. Obviously, we weren't there physically, although you have been in the past. But this film uh, that we're gonna talk about now is called Bad Axe. So here, it's basically uh, a documentary. So after leaving New York City for his rural hometown of Bad Axe, Michigan, mm. at the start of the pandemic, an Asian American filmmaker documents his family struggles to keep their restaurant open. As fears of the virus grow, deep generational scars dating back to the Cambodian killing fields unearthed between the family's patriarch Chung and his daughter Jacqueline. When the Black Lives Matter movement takes center stage in America, the family used their voice to speak out in their town where Trumpism runs deep. What unfolds is a real-time portrait of 2020 through the lens of the multicultural family's fight to keep the American dream alive in the face of the pandemic, neo-Nazis, and the trauma of having survived a genocide. I'm really loving this kind of um, renaissance of uh, Asian storytelling. Yeah. Uh, being American Asian myself, like it's great to see us represented on the screen more. I had to watch this film just because of the synopsis, and it is kind of you know it's very low budget documentary. You know, I like that sometimes though. Yeah. I like that kind of raw, rough, gritty feeling of something because it feels it feels more believable. It's like you, you you're absorbed into it because yeah. you can identify with it. I think if yeah. something is too glossy. I, I just overlook it sometimes. Yeah, and this is, you know, basically Jacqueline is, you know, the daughter, you know, the main daughter in the family who's trying to just do everything in her power. She's very ambitious to keep the family restaurant alive, takes over running the restaurant. Uh, the pandemic hits and she's obviously very concerned for her elderly parents, you know, doesn't want them anywhere out in the public. You know, there's arguments about putting their face masks on. You know, and then that whole thing in real life or that leads to, you know, a face mask being the um, uh, symbol of oppression when actually it's a symbol for kindness. Yeah, and know, respect. And respect, yeah. you know, and people are, you know, uh, the Trumpers just come out and, you know, start being racist yeah. and the neo-Nazis start coming out and, you know couple streets down the, there's some busts uh, uh, from the neo-nazis who are organizing like hate crimes and everything and it's just it's a true story to happening in this little town in michigan and um, happening to lots of businesses happening to lots yeah. of business owners yeah and you see even the struggle of like some of the employees are trumpers and you know how are they dealing with a family who's obviously very liberal and have had to fight you know for their place uh, or their slice of the American pie, so to speak. It sounds like these are good people that, you know, deserve yeah. their business. You know, I'm a little bit more forgiving on documentaries being low budget because, um, you know, it's a real story. Yeah. You know, and it's and you a story that's not going to be told unless someone tells it. So. And also you don't know the background of the filmmakers. You don't, Because obviously there's a reason why they're doing it and it's a genuine reason. I, I, I sometimes like... I don't know, forgive people for not spending lots of money on their film if the reason they're doing it is genuine reason. It's like, I, I find that quite endearing. Well, what is interesting about this is the director of the film is the son in the family, who's off in New York City, like, you know, trying to get, you know, finishes what he needs to do. The family doesn't really understand filmmaking, or they're like, why are you documenting this? It's kind of like one of those, like, what the hell are you doing? We've got real problems to deal with. You know, the sun just keeps the cameras rolling and, you know, and captures everything. And it's just at the end of the day, I think I watched a couple um, YouTube clips about it. At the end of the day, there was a story there and all this footage, you know, kind of. And that's what I like about documentary filmmaking, because sometimes you don't go in to the film with the intent of having this film. You know, you've just captured something and there is a story there that maybe you didn't think necessarily was there. Yeah. So, 
that was the beauty of this documentary. It's very low budget. I mean, it could have been shot on, a, on an iPhone for all we know. I love that. Yeah, but it's very well done um, and a very important documentary. Uh, probably my favorite documentary at South by Southwest this year. Probably the favorite, my favorite documentary I've seen all year, to be fair. Um, and I think you should look out for it. It'll probably hit streaming um, at some point. I haven't heard anything about a release date or heavy promotion uh, about it. It'd be interesting, again, if it gets picked up on some of the other film festivals later this year. Because uh, South by Southwest is pretty upfront, and they usually get the best of like Sundance and you know all that. So. That's so true. Because I've seen you covering stuff at South by like in previous years, and it hasn't been here until it's two years a later. Year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's more than a year. To come so out. Yeah, yeah, it's impressive how upfront it is. Yeah. So watch out for this one. Um, it, this film deserved to be snapped up. Um, and give the director uh, sort of a bigger platform to tell these important stories. So, um, highly recommended. It's another film that you've talked about that I want to check out. So, you know, kudos to you for selling it to me and selling it hopefully to the people that are watching. So, well done, Raj. Thank you. And yeah, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and check us out online too. We're at my website, which is filmariot.net, and at yours, ekmusicblog.com.